Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I've been putting together a soil biology workshop for my local permaculture group. It's made me start thinking more fully about permaculture techniques and what they are achieving in supporting the soil food web and how they are regenerating soils. In today's video, I thought I'd show you around the property and show you how I'm using these to regenerate the soils. I'll show you what's working, what's still a work in progress and what changes I might need to make around the place. At the end of the video, I'll discuss with you ways that the home gardener or anyone can contribute to the rebuilding of the Earth's valuable soils. To start with, what exactly is the soil food web? The soil food web is a network of organisms including bacteria and fungi, nematodes, earthworms, all the little critters in the soil. Those we can see and those you need a microscope for. These organisms have a number of roles that are critical to not only plant health but also the planet's health. Over the years, ever since humans have ploughed the ground and planted crops, we have been slowly killing this network of organisms. Our current soils reflect this damage and they can no longer function as nature designed. So what are these roles? The first one is nutrient cycling. It starts with the plant and photosynthesis, which is a process whereby the sun's energy is used to convert carbon from the atmosphere into sugars that not only help build the plant, but are fed out into the soil to feed the life there. In exchange for these sugars, the soil life gives the plant the nutrients it needs. The bacteria, fungi and the others convert organic matter into plant available nutrients and they also break down parent material, which is the clays, silt and sand, to provide minerals to the plant. The plant can signal what it needs by varying the types of sugars fed to the soil food web. The other roles of the soil food web is the formation of soil structure, inhibiting pests and diseases, weed suppression and soil carbon sequestration. The feeding of sugars by the plant to the soil leads to increasing organism populations. The carbon in the sugars is used to build the cell walls of all of these organisms. In fungi, the walls continue to get stronger over time as more and more carbon is added. This is how carbon is stored in the soil. If we damage soils and kill the organisms, this carbon is released back to the atmosphere. I'll leave a link in the description to a great series of animations that really explains well how the soil food web works. It's been developed by Elaine Ingham, who was a soil microbiologist and has worked for over 30 years in this area. In permaculture, we use a lot of different techniques that help support the soil food web. One of these techniques is the chop and drop. This is where we grow fast growing species of plants to be used as a source of mulch. We chop it and drop it to the ground where it supports soil formation. What we are doing here is moving the soil through succession. So what is succession? This image I've taken from a case study on the Soil Food Web School's website. The link's in the description. Check it out, it's a fantastic explanation of succession and the impact of ploughing on the soil. The ratio and numbers of bacteria and fungi vary in different soils and this dictates the appearance and functionality of the soil and also impacts on the plant life that the soil can support. At the lowest end we see little in the way of life and the soil is actually just dirt, mostly just the parent material. It is very hard and has no structure. And it can't hold water. It is what happens to our soils with too much tilling and damage and is seen in desertification which is an increasing problem around the world. But nature doesn't like bare soil, so she does her best to fix this where possible. To start with, we see weeds moving in. These plants are fast growing, short lived plants whose role is to build organic matter and start the repairing of the damaged soil. Bacteria dominate here. As the organic matter builds and the soil remains undisturbed, we move through succession where we see increasing populations of bacteria, then fungi and all the rest of the critters. When my top swale was constructed, one section was quite rocky and has a high clay content. I've been adding organic matter when I can, but some areas are still bare. The treatment for these clay and rock areas are the same as everywhere else. Keep adding organic matter. 
I've had plants grow on my pavers before. So the fact that I've got a bit of rock here, it doesn't really matter. The principles are the same. Just get organic matter on top of it. Just make sure all of this is on top of there and slowly it will break down, provide some food and the soil microbes will deal with the rest and start to build um, a layer of the, the topsoil right on top of that rock. And don't worry too much about what mulch you use. Use what you have on hand. In this area of my top swale, I had a lot of dock growing that was going to seed in spring. I got in there and chopped it out as best I could, then put the plant material into my swale. The worst thing that could happen was the dock would grow there and would mow them down with my tractor or scythe, depending on how quickly I needed it done. Less compaction, but more time required with the scythe. What you can see growing here though is not dock, but grasses and clover. The nutrients available are supporting plants a little higher up in terms of succession than just the weeds. In early succession, the food available to the plants favours weeds, but as we move higher in succession, plant available nutrients are in the form that higher level plants prefer. So getting back to the permaculture chop and drop, by leaving woody mulch on the soil surface to decompose, provides more fungal foods so we see the soil move more quickly through succession. You can see an example of succession here in my swale. This area was dug out to form the dam spillway and swale, but I haven't been able to get enough organic matter on the area as yet. There is still bare earth with some small weeds appearing first. Then as the organic matter increases, the weed sizes increase. Then you find the grass is starting to appear as the soil is slowly improving. My four apple trees also demonstrate this. They were all planted at the same time and given the same mulch and love at planting. But this one here was planted into soil that is heavy clay. It will take longer for the soil here to improve. The bacteria in the soil first have to cause flocculation of the clay particles, which basically means they are separated on a chemical level. Then the bacteria will glue the particles together to start forming structure and improving soil. We need to add lots of organic matter as well, so I'm adding in more pioneer species around the apple tree to chop and drop in future. Another thing to think about when attempting to fix our soils is compaction. This happens when forces on the soil cause it to become more dense. There is little space for water to be held and oxygen no longer draws down into the soil. This leads to a change in the soil organisms from beneficial aerobic organisms to detrimental anaerobic organisms. These organisms don't provide minerals in plant available form and produce many acids and other compounds that are not supportive of plant growth. So we want to avoid compaction and if it exists already we need to deal with it. Compacted areas will become obvious when we know how to recognise them. Bare earth or where there is a lack of germination or poor plant vigour, weed pressure exists and doesn't seem to change over time. Poor soil structure with less oxygen doesn't support fungi. The fungi need to be present to produce foods preferred by higher value plants and grasses. Water logging is also an issue as the soil structure does not hold water and instead it pulls on top. Landslips are an example of water logging on top of compacted soils. The soil becomes saturated above the compaction zone and when this occurs on a slope, the land will slip. Returning these areas to forest would help with the roots and the improved soil food web, leading to better structure and water holding capacity. Okay, how do we go about improving our soils? Out in my pasture, I have bare earth caused by increased animal impact on certain areas. Not only is there bare earth and little growing, with a lot of rain of late, there is considerable water logging. I'm going to attempt to correct the compaction here by aerating the soil with a broad fork. I've used the broad fork in my veggie garden, but haven't dragged it out into my pasture as yet, but I think I need to. The broad fork lifts the soil but doesn't turn it over. This means there is minimal disturbance to the soil organisms while getting some air down there to hopefully promote the growth of our aerobic organisms. I'm also going to inoculate the area with a bit of my compost, then cover it all with cut grass. On a side note, quite often the first response I get when guys in particular see my backyard and parts of my pasture is that I haven't mowed it yet. My grass is often left to grow tall, which actually provides a resource that can be used when I do get around to cutting it, as I can use the biomass for compost making or mulching areas of bare earth. That is what I'm using today out in the pasture. Hopefully these areas will improve. I'll keep you updated down the track. In these areas of pasture, which I fixed up the other day, 
Something that would have made the areas regenerate more quickly would be to have planted a whole lot of different plants in these areas. All the different plants growing increase the amount of sugars that are fed to the soil organisms and begins to uh, multiply their numbers a lot quicker. By planting a diversity of plants as well as a large number, we can increase the numbers of niches that are filled, both above the ground and in the soil profile. All the roots get into all the little spaces, which means that more of the soil organisms are going to be fed those sugars by the roots. My kitchen garden is an example of this. As pointed out in my kitchen garden as a plant nursery video, it is a wild zone that I let go to see and grow lots of volunteers. The plants get along great and all those roots support the underground life who then provide all the nutrients to the many plants above. By maintaining this garden as a no-dig bed means that I'm not disturbing the soil. If I do remove plants, I'll cut them off at ground level and leave the roots as organic matter for the soil life. If I were to disturb the soil, it would certainly destroy the fungi and you have to wait again for soil succession and the fungi to re-establish to get full nutrient cycling going to support the variety of plants in this area. Another example of diversity and large numbers of plants is in my annual garden bed where I had this experimental bed. I threw in lots of different seeds, large numbers and a good variety of seeds to see if it would actually help build the soil. For my summer planting, I'm gonna just chop all of this at the ground level and plant immediately either seeds or seedlings and just see how it goes. Perennial ground covers used in annual beds constantly feed the soil organisms. I haven't got this going yet, but it's definitely something I'll be thinking about in future. While there's still plenty to learn and implement around here, what can you do at home to help support the soil food web? First of all, always cover the soil. Do not leave it bare. Make and use compost or on a smaller scale, worm castings. This provides an inoculant and humus. The humus is organic matter which provides nutrients and increases water holding capacity of the soil. Think about compaction and ways you can avoid compacting your soil. Reduce traffic over the soil as much as possible. If you already have areas of compaction, try using a broad fork or garden fork to gently lift, but don't turn the soil. For larger areas like in farmland, subsoilers such as the yeoman plough can be used. Don't let the soil dry out, life needs water. Increase the number and types of plants that you are growing in both perennial and annual garden beds and use no dig methods for growing. We can also be mindful of who we buy our food from. Supporting growers using regenerative growing methods wherever possible also supports the building of our soils. And stop using pesticides, herbicides and artificial fertilisers because they either kill or reduce the populations of the soil food web. Not only that, by using those chemicals, it also reduces the population of all our beneficial pollinators and insects above the ground. We can all do something to support the soil food web and help to regenerate soils. Be mindful of it and our actions can support this amazing underground world of critters so important to the health of our planet. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.